Some viewers may find the following video disturbing. Viewer discretion is advised. Moraline was convicted of shooting and killing his wife, Sherry, and stabbing his adult twin daughters at the family's hall. The conviction is upheld after a defense attorney's claimed juror misconduct. Loreline is currently in the courtroom for sentencing, and he gave a statement this morning to the courtroom. The judge just sentenced him to 150 years in prison. We reported on first at four, a Northern Indiana judge sentenced to Shea Hector to 157 years in the Department of Corrections. And he was convicted in May of murdering Dewan Broomfield and Mary Woodruff back in October of 2017. Police said Hackner and William Rice shot the couple in their home on Maryland Street in Evansville. A Broomfield told officers with his dying breath that Hackner was the shooter. A Tippecanoe County jury found Hackner guilty as charged in May, and today the judge handed down the 157-year sentence. Well, this case was moved up north due to Hackner was acquitted in Banbury County in another murder case. He was charged in the 2014 shooting death of 27-year-old Willie Williams. Police said Williams was killed on Thanksgiving in an alley just off South Elliott Street. His death remains unsolved. As for William Rice, the other man accused of the Maryland Street murders, the Banbury County Prosecutor's Office said that is still. The victim was Sharon Anderson Norfris of Shaker Heights. The 60-year-old was raped and murdered by William Hammonds. Today, the 22-year-old man was sent to life without the possibility of parole, plus 100 years. Here he is in court, not only facing justice, but the victim's family as well. They gave emotional impact statements. The murder happened last year on May 4th. As Hammonds, also known as Boo Man, entered the Shaker Heights Heights apartment using a key fob. Now, once inside, he held her down, raped her, then tried to force her to give up her ATM pin. But the Shaker Heights makeup artist would fight back, but only to be strangled to death in her bathroom. Hans would be arrested a few weeks later, and DNA evidence connected him to the crime. Now, besides spending the rest of his natural life in jail, the judge made one more additional term of his sentence every year on May 4th, on the anniversary of her death. Hans must sit. In solitary confinement. The defendant, Tyler Grogan. You shooting that police, you violated that woman, and you don't want to hear it. Well, you're going to hear it, and I don't give a rat's behind whether you like it or not. Wednesday, a jury convicted the Roswell man of nearly 30 charges stemming from this May 2011 standoff at the Ashton Point Apartments. Prosecutors say Grogan robbed two people here, then held them hostage for hours, repeatedly raping a woman as the SWAT team closed in. As Judge Dempsey prepared to sentence Grogan, he cursed. All right, hey, sit him down, sit him down. Uh, given the defendant's actions, I got a different sentence I'm going to impose now. Seven consecutive life sentences plus 270 years in prison. His attorney told the judge Grogan is sorry for what happened and blamed his behavior on demons he's dealt with since his own mother's murder a few years ago. Why did this bitch come up? He put himself in a situation which he did. Sure. Get the defendant out of my courtroom, please. I'm percent sure that these are just and fair. I want to make it clear that it is the court's intention that the defendant never set foot in free society. Now it is his turn to be a prisoner, but before he's shut away forever, his victims got a chance to say their piece. Here's ABC's Alex Perez. He is perhaps one of the most evil men in America. But before Ariel Castro was sent away to serve his life plus a thousand year prison sentence. Oklahoma City cop Daniel Holtzclaw has been sentenced to 263 years in prison for raping and sexually victimizing more than a dozen women while on patrol in a low income neighborhood. According to state court records, Holtzclaw's attorney filed a motion for a new trial just a day before he was to be sentenced. The judge denied the motion in Thursday's hearing. The 29-year-old was convicted last month on 18 counts, including four counts of first-degree rape. Count eight, defendant is guilty of the crime of forcible oral sodomy and punishment is set at 20 years. Count nine. During Holt's Clause trial, 13 women testified that the former cop had coerced them into having sex after threatening to arrest them for possessing drug paraphernalia or on outstanding. He took advantage of her when she was just four years old, will spend the rest of his life in prison. And he will not 
hurt anyone else. In 1994-95, she attended Church of Today Daycare, which is now closed down. She vividly remembers Joshua Maurice Young sexually abusing her there, and she even told her mom about it when she was about four. She said, Mama, Mr. Josh has me do that to him. Her mom went to Statesville Police, and they reportedly turned the case file over to the DA, but charges weren't filed against Young until 2014. It's like he's a monster in the closet. Yeah. Jasmine Gray came forward and reported similar abuse during the same time frame. Police reopened Durant's case, and Young was charged with more than 50 counts of sex crimes. We were in the court today as a jury convicted him and he was sentenced to hundreds of years behind bars. I feel like how I knew is thank God. 500 years in prison. That punishment just handed down to one of the most wanted child molesters in our state. After his manhunt comes to an end, he finally faces his victims in court. A I forgive you for everything you've ever done to me. I can look at you as much as I want. Vitasek is convicted of molesting eight young boys, ages 7 to 15, over a 15-year period dating back to 1990. He often targeted children of single mothers. He also was a master manipulator in getting the adults to trust him. I should have known, because looking back, all the signs were there. I should have protected my boys from this man. Vitasek was arrested in Texas in 2006 after spending more than a year and a half on the run. Police believe he had several victims there as well and also believe there could be more victims out there who never came forward. I just hope that there will be a never, not another chance for him to ever hurt anyone. He is a man police called a true classic predator. We'll be back. More than an hour, the jury in convicted killer Robert Martinez's murder trial had their punishment verdict. 99 years in prison. Martinez killed a man in what prosecutors called an execution-style murder. Paul Benema following this story from the Justice Center. Nobody deserves to die. Nobody deserves to be executed the way that he executed Stephen Cerna. Cerna was shot to death in a drainage ditch known as Hell's Gate three years ago. He was lured there by 22-year-old Robert Martinez, who promised him he would make him some drug money. This was not an accidental or a reckless shooting. It was an execution. An execution, she said, in retaliation for the murder of one of Martinez's friends. Martinez claimed that a member of Cerna's family was involved in that murder. The state's key witness was Martinez's uncle, Larry Isaac. He testified that his nephew admitted to him that he killed Cerna. This was not a retaliatory strike. There's no evidence of that. Not one drop of evidence other than from Larry Isaac, who himself does not know. Isaac testified for the state in exchange for a reduction in prison time in a kidnapping case pending against him. McRae suggested that because of that deal, Isaac's testimony was not credible. It was prosecutors counter as they asked for a life sentence. The murder victim's wife could not have been more clear. She asked the judge to sentence Shane Thompson to 110 years in prison. The now 19-year-old Shane Thompson pleaded guilty to murdering 39-year-old Evelyn Injai during a September 25, 2013 robbery attempt at this Rickers BP located on West 38th Street. The murder and robbery came during a spree. That same day, Thompson and his accomplices also hit this convenience store at 71st and Keystone. Seven days prior to that, Thompson broke into the home of this woman and sexually assaulted her while her husband and sons were held at gunpoint. We usually don't identify rape victims, but she wanted to tell her story and how it affected her sons. One came to me and said he felt suicidal, and then the other one attempted suicide. And it came out later that and I asked him why, and he said, because I couldn't help you. He could have lived with it. Given the nature of the crimes, the judge sentenced Thompson to 110 years behind bars. Justice was done today because Shane Thompson got the maximum sentence of 110 years. Sentence ever given in a human trafficking case in the United States. Brock Franklin received 400 years in prison. He was convicted in the Arapahoe County District Court of operating a ring that forced women and girls into prostitution. Prosecutors said there were nine victims who were assaulted both physically and mentally. One of them spoke to reporters after sentencing. 
the sentence that was came down, I honestly, I don't think it's enough. I want more. I want more. More than anything, what we're pleased to see is that in an aggravated case with multiple victims, um, this was not buy one, get one free sentence. A former Christian school teacher now facing more than 200 years behind bars. Good evening, I'm Brett Conley. I'm Angela Taylor. Graziani pleaded guilty to multiple child porn charges last year. West Truth Amanda Ober was in the courtroom when his sentence was handed down. There were also well over a dozen families whose young sons were victimized by Graziati in the courtroom. Many of them let out gasps and sobs when the judge sentenced Graziati to 210 years in prison. Matthew Graziati will never know freedom again. In federal court Monday, he was sentenced to 210 years in prison. The judge here sentenced her to 100 and 25 years in prison. She did take the stand and she looked directly at the victim, Raheem Grant's mother, and she said, I'm sorry. She also said she was drunk that night and wasn't in her right mind. A jury convicted Hart for the 2018 murder of Grant. That same jury saw a video of Hart shooting Grant several times as he begged for his life. Hart claimed Grant had beaten her that night and she shot him in self-defense. Then police uncovered the video of her shooting him multiple times over 13 minutes in front of their daughter. Harp called the shooting an accident. Had I not been drunk, it would have never happened. Judge Maria Birkenkotter, stern and commanding on behalf of the victims. People are hungry to hear from Ms. Lane, to hear why you did this hungry to desperate to hear you explain what happened to Aurora. Birkenkotter sentenced Dinell Lane to 100 years in prison for faking her own pregnancy, then luring Michelle Wilkins into her home and cutting Wilkins' almost full-term baby out of her womb. I've never seen a case as vicious, as cruel, as deliberate, uh, and as awful as this case. Because of Colorado laws, the majority of charges in this case were related to Wilkins' injuries, not the harm inflicted on the unborn child. So Wilkins wanted the sentencing phase to be about her daughter, Aurora. The prosecutor called Sean Corbley a vile, disgusting, evil creature. He said he is the worst of the worst. The judge chastised 34-year-old Sean Corbley for what he described as a malicious, disturbing, heartless, and insensitive crime. Corbley had been convicted of two prior rapes, but this latest occurred at the Ashmore Trace Apartments last July. He broke into the victim's home, wielding a knife. Uh, put his hand in her mouth and put the knife up against her neck. Um, after that, the knife never left her side, never left her presence, never left being pressed up against the skin. All the while, he's threatening to kill her and kill her one-year-old child sleeping right by. So he has the knife in hand, and he's threatening the victim that he's raping, that he's going to use that knife to chop up her one-year-old kid. And it, it's just, it, it cannot be more offensive or more egregious. The victim submitted a letter to the court in which she told the defendant, you are ashamed to humanity. I will pray to God for you. I will pray that he send you straight to hell after prison where you belong. Rot in hell. We will not identify the victim, but when the judge sentenced Corbley to 270 years, she was pleased. A Georgia woman was sentenced to 190 years in prison after she was found guilty of confining her adoptive daughter in a chicken coop and an outhouse, tying her up like a dog by the neck to a tree and shocking her with remote controlled electric dog collars. Diane Franklin was convicted last month on 19 counts of first-degree cruelty to children, eight counts of false imprisonment, and one count of aggravated assault. In her sentencing, Franklin reportedly said she was sharing wisdom for her adopted daughter, who was ungrateful. Franklin took the girl in as a foster child in 2006 and then adopted her in 2007 when she was 10 years old. The girl was removed from the house in 2012 by social workers. Superior Court Justice Bobby Peters reportedly told Franklin, to me, you're just an evil woman. Punishing a man who murdered a popular Detroit chef. He was known as Chef Doug. His sister described him today as a selfless man with a loving demeanor. You see his picture right there. Dave Llewellyn here right now to tell us about the tough sentence for Chef Doug's killer.
Now, the Wayne County Judge, uh, Carolyn, told Trayvon Baskerville, he's, his own words on a jail phone are what convicted him. He was sentenced for murder and for the sex trafficking of a 17-year-old girl. Now, he got 60 to 100 years in prison for second-degree murder, the same for human trafficking involving a death, and 25 to 50 years for human trafficking of a minor. He was sentenced for four other felonies as well. Doug Calhoun, known as Chef Doug to his friends, went missing in May of last year. His body was found in a drum on Detroit's west side. Prosecutors said Chef Doug arranged a date with the girl, presumably not knowing her age. He later argued with Baskerville, and he was shot dead. Chef Doug's sister telling the court today the murder has broken her heart. Since DJ's murder, I wake in the middle of the night with a total sadness in the pit of my stomach. The pain is the way I start each and every day. A 74-year sentence to win. Uh, prosecutors argued that she set that fire back in 2015 uh, to get an insurance claim on her nail salon. John Mesh, Larry Leggio both killed when a wall collapsed on a nail salon at Independence and Prospect October 12, 2015. Two other firefighters severely and permanently injured in the collapse. Today, it's the teen who pleaded guilty to killing his own half-sister today. He ruled 40 to 100 years in prison for Savan Schmoss. 24 Hour News Ace Leon Hendricks was in court for the emotional hearing. He's joining us live right now. Leon. Susan, good evening. There were no soft words for the young confessed killer. No forgiveness, no well wishes but plenty of pain and anger from love. An Omaha serial rapist is off the streets and on his way to jail for 90 to 100 years. Christopher Annis attacked and assaulted seven women over three years. One of his victims, a 16-year-old relative. John Chapman was in the courtroom when the sentence was handed down this morning, and he continues our coverage. Some of the victims in this case asked the judge to impose the maximum sentence. 30-year-old Christopher Ennis with time served, will be 72 years old when he is eligible for parole. In court, the serial rapist talked about how his time in jail was hard on him, how he couldn't celebrate his 30th birthday, and how he missed his six-year-old daughter. Ennis apologized to his victims and to his family for his crimes. From 2011 until he was caught in 2013, Ennis attacked women as they walked alone in Northeast Omaha, dragged them into bushes, and then assaulted them. One of his victims, a relative, who spoke in court, the victim said, I don't want a pity party. To me, it comes down to a single, salient fact. On September 7, 2011, you savagely beat your child to the edge of death. For this, you must be punished. Please stand. I find you guilty of the offense charged I'll set your sentence at confinement in the penitentiary for a period of 99 years. The sentence goes into effect today. As required by law, you will receive all back time credits. Counsel, is there any reason in law why sentence should not be pronounced at this time? County judge resentenced convicted rapist Jerry Walker today to 100 years in prison for crimes he committed 24 years ago. In 1988, at the age of 17, Walker was sentenced to five life sentences for raping a woman and attempting to shoot a man at point-blank range. Two years ago, the Supreme Court ruled that juveniles can't serve life without a chance of parole for crimes in which no one was killed. 